I take this opportunity to welcome Professor, respected Professor K. N. Seth Sir, Dean, Faculty of Technology, DDU, Dr. Purvang Dalal Sir, Head of Electronics and Communication Department, DDU, and Dr. Harish Sahu Sir, an expert and ATL team member from DRDO. The workshop will be coordinated by Dr. Mitesh Limachya Sir, Professor Marmik Soni Sir, and Professor Hardik Patel Sir faculties at electronics and communication department ddu i would like to request dr mitesh limachya sir to give a concise note and brief us about the ftp uh, very good morning to one and all dear participants on behalf of uh, ec department dharamsi desai university nadiyad i along with my fellow coordinators uh, Professor Marmik and Professor Hardik, uh, welcome you all in this uh, AICT sponsored online faculty development program on recent advances in VLSI design and system. Uh, let me give you a brief idea about this FDP. Uh, primarily, the FDP covers uh, uh, important aspects of VLSI chip designing like modeling, simulation and verification of digital circuits use of various algorithms for design for testability uh, uh, known as a DFT. Uh, in this FDP, the participants will be aware uh, with the state of art technology in semiconductor uh, devices. Apart from this, the participants will be also aware with the use of nanotechnology for the mobile systems. Uh, additionally, uh, in this FDP, the participants will get idea about radiation hardening of uh, CMOS based circuitry using the system level solutions. So these are the target area uh, on which the FDP, FDP will be focused. Uh, this FDP comprises total 14 sessions, each of two hours. Out of this, 10 technical sessions uh, will be delivered by experts of various reputed industries and experts of uh, reputed academic institutes like IITs. Uh, to make this FDP technically enrich, three lab sessions are included, uh, which will be handled by in-house experts. One session will be conducted by AICT certified trainer on the topic human values in education. In this FDP, total 88 participants are registered, out of which 26% of participants are from host institute, 14% are from other institute of Gujarat state, and 60% are from outstate institutes. So at this point of FDP, uh, we are anticipating uh, active involvement of each of you to make this FDP uh, interactive, helpful, and fruitful. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I would like to request Professor K. N. Seth, sir, Dean, Faculty of Technology, DDU, to address the gathering. Hello. Yes, Mr. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Hello. A very good morning to all the participants, today's speakers, the organizing team and the invited faculty members. On behalf of the Vice Chancellor, Dr. H. M. Desai sir, and our Director, Sri Ankur Desai sir, I welcome you all for the inaugural session of this one week FDP program on recent advances in VLSI design and system. This program is sponsored by Atal. So this is the uh, third program in the sequence. This year we are organizing in the DDU. So it has been a great, uh, uh, I mean, takeover by the AICT from IST. AICT has taken over for organizing this type of faculty development program. It was very difficult for the faculty to get registered and to get the learning from the STTP programs through IIT, uh, IST. Whereas with the ATAL, especially in the time of this pandemic, 
they offered so many online programs and so many opportunities for the faculty and the, the practitioners to learn the advances in different areas. So this is a great initiative by Atal and we definitely uh, we are thankful to this Atal for this venture. One representative from Atal is already there. So I express my thanks and gratitude to Atal for giving uh, everybody this opportunity for learning. If I introduce our uh, university, the university started in 1968 as a small institute, DDIT, with chemical engineering department. 84, we introduced so many other departments like EC, IC, chemical, civil, etc. Now, it has become the first autonomous institute of the Gujarat state in 1990, then the deemed university in 2000, and from 2005 we are the state university. Apart from the faculty of technology, the DT university has having different faculties like dental, pharmacy, as well as the medical sciences. Our faculty of medical science remains very useful to the people of Nadia and the area during this pandemic. It has provided a great service to the community. Now, this EC department, basically, it is one of the best department in our institute, having the best level of the faculty. Okay, largest number of professors are there in the EC department. They are always active and proactively participating in sharing the knowledge. They are having a well-developed uh, laboratories. They are having a nicely built alumni interaction. Okay, this VLSI is also the reason why it has been conducted here. It is correlated with the industry. Okay, so VLSI has been the core strength of DDU right from the beginning. And you will find that many of our alumni are there in the VLSI design field. Okay, so many of the experts in the VLSI, they are also from DDU alumni list. So here also we will find some Nilesh Tanpura and others who are on the pioneering side of the VLSI. They are the product of EC department. So basically we are proud of our EC department for having this. And right now we are having Dr. Purvang Dalal with the dynamic uh, takeover on all this uh, area. So VLSI has its presence right from the small scale gadgets to the spacecrafts. And it has a, a very great potential as explained by the coordinator that it is going to be very useful and still there is a lot of scope. But I, I, I'm just explaining that whatever I've learned from the new education policy of the government. See, there is a great shift in the objectives of the technical education in the new education policy. See, from last 20 years, we are hearing that someone has published a number of research papers in this journal with this impact factor, this, this purpose index and everything. Now you see in the new education policy, more emphasis is based, based on the skill development. Okay, so more emphasis is on the innovations and skill development. I, I think in the next few years, you will not need a MTech degree or a PhD degree, okay, to have a job, to get a job, especially it will remain only for the professors to become PhD. So the great thing is all the innovations and the skill development has become the core part of technical learning. And it is evident that we have seen that when the even in the US, US government has sponsored the aircraft development project in 1915. Okay, so government has sponsored a project, it was given to the university, they could not do it. And without any government support, right brothers, put the aircraft in this space, airplane in a space. Okay, so they could raise that with the innovation. So those innovation skills are very much appreciated uh, in US and other places. Now the government has take over the taken over the initiative to support these innovations, support these startups at our place also. Okay, so our SSIP has also done a good task. They have initiated for all the support. 
So apart from regular research, now innovations and skill development has become the main part. And this school also is supposed to be one of the tool in development of this such skill along with this laboratory session. Here in the school, we are having good experts from IITs and IISCs along with the experts from the field. Here, these people are going to develop the lab sessions and large number of the participants outside the Gujarat, they are also going to be benefited from this school. I wish you a very happy learning and I wish the department for success of this school. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Sir. Now I kindly request Dr. Purvan Dalal sir, head of EC department DDU to share a few words with us. Thank you. Uh, respected Dean Faculty of Technology, Professor K. N. Seth, sir, uh, Dr. Sahu, sir, uh, program coordinators, my colleagues, and dear participants. A very good morning and one welcome to this five days online Atal FDP on recent advances in VLSI design and system. As we know, chip design in India has grown by leaps and bounds. Thanks to several multinational design service companies and product companies. It translates to huge opportunities for quality VLSI trained talent. I repeat, huge opportunity for quality VLSI trained talents. So we require lots of support by multinational industries and academias as well. This FDP is intended for enthusiastic faculty members working in engineering colleges to make them familiar with latest trends in this VLSI design technology. This will also enrich them with depth and breadth of the knowledge in this area. This will definitely help in bridging the gap between academia and industries. This is very important because we are in a teaching field. We are teaching students. Ultimately, they will be absorbed by industries. So if minimum is the gap, more will be the benefit to overall economy and technology development, right? So looking at the program topics as shared by Dr. Mites and list of experts, I am sure that the participants will be highly benefited by this FDP. I urge all of you to take maximum benefit of this program. As a head of this department, organizing department of this FDP, I wish you all a comfortable and learning experience of this FDP program. Thank you all. Thank you so much, sir. I request all the participants to, to stay in the meet. The first session will begin at 9.35 a.m. Participants, just uh, wait for our experts to arrive, and uh, we'll be starting the first session very soon at 9:35.
as it was mentioned in the briefing mail, 80% attendance is compulsory uh, throughout the program for the successful certification. Uh, as well as uh, we'll be sharing the link for the attendance every day. So just mark your presence through that Google form also. We'll be starting the first session very soon as the expert joins. Just be there in the meeting, all of you. Once again, good morning all of you. I welcome you all to the first session of Atal FDP on recent advances in VLSI design and system. I'm honored to introduce our first speaker for the day, Mr. Nilesh Ranpura. Ranpura sir, as the Dean sir has mentioned in the inauguration ceremony, he is the alumni of the EC department, Dhamsi Desai University. He has completed his Bachelor's of Engineering from Dunn University in 1996. He has completed his MBA from IIM Hindabad. He is the family name for our department. He has been in the association with the department with various activities for many years. And he always extends his support. He is currently the he, he is currently at a, a, a Delivery manager in the PD section at Infochips and Aero Company. He is the key player in so many years, from many years at uh, for the growth of Infochips. Uh, I welcome you, sir, once again, and uh, I hope that the session will be really interactive and fruitful for all the participants. So please. Thank you, Marmik. And very good morning to all of you. Am I audible, Marmik? Well? Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Okay. Just a second. Is my screen visible? Yes, sir, it is visible. Okay. A very good morning to all of you. And it's a week start and a fresh day on Monday. So I'm going to cover more on the industry and advancement and towards the systems. And you can all ask questions in between as well, just by raising your hand or Marmik and team can help me if somebody shares the question on the, uh, any of the window. Charles. ESL, electronic system design, is a very, very prominent field 
emerged in the last 20 years. I'm going to glance through a few products which we have developed in the last 10 plus years. We have recently developed Pro One virtual reality device. This device ensures that you can feel the touch of objects. So if there is a butterfly sitting on your hand, you can feel that butterfly has sat on the hand. This infrared keyboard is very well known to most of you, has been in the industry for the last five years. The new product for human safety came when children are trying swimming, they can wear this device. It's a wearable device. And when they go inside swimming pool, and if they start drowning, the device will start giving message on Wi-Fi phone to the trainer that the person is started getting falling inside the water and he's unsafe. World's smallest fingerprint detector through USB device and through USB memory, wearable watches, and wearable diabetic meters. These are some of the examples you might come across or you might have came across in the electronic system level design field. These are already available in the market. The, another kind of variable is motor ring. This ring is another example of variable where you wear like a ring and on the ring you can see the impact, uh, the emails, the twitters, the watch, the Facebook and other things. Okay. And the second is an e-card here. The e-card is, is Robo and it comes automatically using GPS on the streets. You use your ATM card or your debit card or identity card or mall card and it opens up, you buy it and you pay and then you come back. This has been already launched in Germany. These are all soft toys which works. It detects a human and it starts basically uh, giving messages, greeting. In the loneliness, people feel they do a dance and works like a virtual pet or robotic pet. This is an interesting teeth cleaner. You can see from here, it is a teeth shape, uh, complete device. You need not to move your hands to do brush. You just put your thing into your on your teeth and you put the button and it will add all the necessary ingredients to clean your teeth and then you take it out. So this is also called innovation of idea in the same sector of teeth cleaning through the electronic system design. The reason I'm showing you this product, it is important to know whatever design, whatever research we do, it has to be applicable to the humans. It has to be applicable to the industry. It has to be applicable to everywhere. And that's the reason I'm showing this product. And we have been involved in developing this product for our customers as well. This is my famous example, which we have developed for our, our client. It's called WonderCube. This wonder cube can work as a device to convert built-in cable. It can be keychain, it can be phone stand, it can be camera and video conferencing device. It can also use OPG, it can convert to for flash memory. Not only that, it can also work as a charging support. So if you have a battery, you connect your battery on the device and you can charge the phone. And it can also have camera and torch light. The another device is very, very high speed Wi Fi routers, the virtual reality device, and foldable TVs. This is foldable TVs. You see, LCD screen is on the top. When it goes down, it becomes a small TV. By the way, these are available from Samsung and Sony already. Foldable phones. Again, a new requirement and need for foldable phones have started coming. And companies have launched the foldable phones, which are available before 10 years. Now they are available 
with the LCD screen. Previously, they are available with touch and the keyboards. So these are the advancement of LCD uh, new foldable phones. This is mechanical advancement, electronic advancement, and system design advancement. Waterman wallet. So this is very intelligent piece of wallet. It is built in power bank. It's camera. So if the wallet got stolen, the camera automatically records, it detects the face and it has a face detection logic and transmit the signal over the Wi-Fi and GPS and you can track the wallet. Also takes photographs. So you can, when you recover the wallet, that you can understand who has opened the wallet. Oh, already here you have seen Google Glasses like this. I'll not go into more details there. There is a bridging charger available. You can connect any other mobile phone to charge the discharge phone through this small device. And it's available on the Amazon. It's a very interesting idea. You can just connect another phone to charge another phone. Bulbs from Philips, which has 3 million hues and colors. Going beyond electronics, communication, servers, and laptops, this rotomatic, rotimatic has been designed as another example of system design, where in the front, you can only see this, this device, just like a coffee machine or tea machine. You press the button and the roti comes out here from the window. But behind it, there's a complete mechanical, electrical, and electronic system, which is ensuring that the roti is made completely automatically. So this is also an example where people are solving larger problems of making on-the-go, point-of-sale roti machine. Intelligent helmet. This helmet has Wi-Fi, phone connectivity, and camera. So when you're driving the, on the road, you can see inside the helmet, there is a window available, and you can see what is going on. There's a back window also available, so you can turn your backside of the camera on. So if somebody's coming from the backside, you can see it on the camera. And it has a phone connectivity, so if phone comes, you can pick it up. It also has auto detection. So when the phone, where the when, when the car is approaching near to the any rider, then the, uh, the then it will give a siren, it flashes, and you can understand that there is a chance of accident because some car is behind you. This helmet has been available in the market, especially in East Asian countries. Completely 3D printed home. This home is basically an example, a classic live example of a 3D printing home where the complete robotic printer was used and this home was printed. It took around one day to print this. This is, this is really great example where the 3D printer took the basic raw material, the, the wooden material and it was printed completely. The reason to show this example is one should know that whatever engineering design we are doing has been used in the market for normal application, for advanced application, and for innovative application. This is the best example of robotics. There are two robots created by the company in Germany. They were our client. These robots create 10,000 different kind of drinks, starting from juice to mocktails to other drinks and it also serves 60 drinks per minute very very fast oh, okay only one type of drink in 60 uh, 60 per minute if you want to create a variety of drinks then its speed will slow down but this is is a classic example uh, of an innovation in robotics as well creating a drink is not easy somebody will ask for cocktail somebody will ask for juice somebody will ask for sherbet somebody will ask for something else so this robot has pillars and it detects and creates automatically. How come electric vehicles remain behind? 
already Nissan has launched completely high speed electric vehicle. You've seen the cars in the normal application, but now even racing cars are going into completely EV mode. And when we say EV mode, it's all electronic inside. It's all system inside. There's all just little mechanical parts uh, and electrical parts like motors and then completely electronic. The US Army also developed a very small Black Hornet personal system for soldiers. So when the soldiers are in critical mission, they go with this device. It's like a small drone helicopter. It flies inside the enemy's home or enemy's area, records, assists the soldier, and it also has small bullets or small smoke, smoke uh, releases, and it helps soldiers to clean the way and enter the, enter the enemy's area. This was a very powerful tool used by American uh, forces in the recent last two to three years of missions. By the way, this doesn't come into media because, you know, media doesn't cover everything. However, we know that because we have been developing this for them. Keep this. This is Philips Hue bulbs available in the market. It can have so many colors, variations in your room, electronically changeable. <clears throat> Airpop Active Mask. So this mask is again electronic mask, specially designed to replace disposable filters. It cleans more than 99% of particulates, dust, allergens, and microbial particles. And not only that, it also measures outside and inside situation and gives the dashboard on your mobile phone. Coincidentally, this was invented two years back and the startup was awarded. The design was so elegant, but there were no customers because there was no need at that time other than only a few places. Corona came and this startup gained the momentum. e vision industry is also going through a system change. The systems have been transformed from the normal liquid fuel based aircraft to completely electric EV aircraft. And the success has been already done there's been 10 seater EV vehicle has been designed, which has electronics, electrical parts, and mechanical parts. This is going to be a very, very, this kind of technologies are very challenging to develop because it takes five to 10 years. I'll not speak more about this, but robots you have seen in last one and a half year has started entering everywhere. Robots serving food, robots assisting the you know, nurses and doctors has been most common example in the society right now. If, if you are from Ahmedabad, there was an restaurant on Ahmedabad Sindhubon Road which has this kind of robot serving the food. Right now, due to COVID, that restaurant is closed down. But in the Science City area in Ahmedabad, these example of these robots are already there. There's another world called smart wearables. There are few types, near body electronics, on body electronics, in body, which is inside the body electronics and electronic textiles. These are the four different categories of smart wearables. This is hearing aid, which is a category called near body because it's near to the body, not inside the body. Then on body, this is wearable position sensing example, healthcare device. It does, it is connected to your body, so it's on body. It measures the pulse, it measures the temperature, it measures the acceleration. It also measures the ECG. Uh, by the way, this is designed for hospitals and hospitals are using a very effective device for patients uh, and it helps doctor to be more productive. In body electronics has been the current area of research and implementation both. Oesophageal capsule endoscopy is the classic example where this capsule goes inside the human body and there are components inside it which is physically having an intelligent data transfer and receiving the data from the body, especially images. And this is under testing and 
once this is approved after testing on 10,000 patients, this will be a new way of uh, diagnostic for the doctors. This picture is basically giving an example that when you have many variables connected to the human, it forms variable sensor network and it needs to be handled better. And that can be done through a system design or that can be done through chip design. Prosthetic hand is an extension of medical science and electronics combined. It's already there, developed, and very, very well example of electronic design for medical. These are the both available. The future roadmap is uh, always evolving for variables. Basically, anything, anyone, anytime is the goal future roadmap for variables. So you have anyone, means any patient needing it, any time needing it, and anything, whether it's an ear, whether it's a heart, whether it's an endoscopy, whether it's a surgery, the variables are going to be everywhere. And these are some of the examples that how variables is evolving. You know, in phase one, it is accessories. In phase two, they are textiles, you know, the variable clothes. In the phase three, it's patchable on the body. Phase four, implantable. But this is the roadmap how evolved in the industry in the last 10 years and will be evolved between 2021 to 2025. But you can clearly see that the future is going to be implantable variables. These variables are already being used. Marmik, am I audible well? Yes, sir, you are clearly audible. This is the example I saw to everyone. All of the systems you have seen are designed by us, or our customer have this common component. It will always have storage memories, different, different kind of storage memories, different kind of connectivity devices like GPS, Bluetooth, LIN, radar in, in case of automotive, uh, short distance communication mechanism, SPI and I2C, ODEX, sensors, power management blocks, another kind of sensors called MEM sensor, and interfaces like HDMI, LVDS, touch controller, LCD, and the heart of the system, multiple application processor. So this is a de facto architecture of any system we have seen in last 10 years. We will see in next 10 years. Okay. So ideally, this kind of diagram should be taught to the students as well. That easy to remember architecture is this. Any system you open, it will have these components, either one or two or many. How the VLSI industry is ecosystem is working. I know some of you are already aware, but I want to recap quickly. So there are typically an IP vendors, intellectual property vendors available from companies like Arm, Synopsys, e chips Rambus. There are EDA companies or capital companies like Cadence, Synopsys, Mentographics. There are research institutes in academia like MITs, NITs, SUPUs, JITs, CUs. There are ODM manufacturers like Quanta, Gemtech, and Flextronics who manufactures PCBs and systems. There are foundries who manufacture silicon. And ESL companies like Samsung, Apple, Cisco, Intel, they all integrate these all partners together. And there's another partner called eInfoChips or Wipro or HCL or many other companies who provide sub design services to these companies. So the design services company has to know X, Y, Z, all the aspects and work closely with them. So whoever is having the scope of work in VLSI or whoever wants to know the VLSI, this is going to be our Kundali in the VLSI ecosystem. Industry will remain like this as architecture of ecosystem. There is no other ecosystem block beyond this diagram in the VLSI or electronic system we will design. We, will. we consider Microsoft and Oracle and other software company here as a EV and CAD company. 
Well, what is industry is doing right now? So, for example, one of the startup company, The Light, has developed multi-camera device. So you can see from here, they have four camera models available. Five camera, 12 camera, six camera, and nine camera. So the person who started the startup was an optical scientist, and he wanted to create DSLR and DSLR camera effect on the mobile phone. So he experimented by putting, this is the first device he made. He kept more than 12 cameras to try various focal length, depth, aperture, time, and took photographs. And he wanted to create high calibration, high resolution digital image, which will look like SLR camera. So with this hardware, he senses the photograph, and then they have developed their own digital signal processing, complete DSP algorithm to create a classic best SLR style image. And this has worked very well, very successfully. Uh, and this startup uh, started selling the product to the OEM manufacturers. This means Apple and Samsung comes to them and buys four camera device. If you've seen recently, last year and this year, both Apple and Samsung has launched more than three camera devices. And they bought the system from this company. Not only that, if you want to see the future, both of these or leading mobile companies will come up with a nine camera device and in future 12 camera device. The days are not far. And that's where the future is what we are seeing right now. This company has made this silicon. This silicon is very complex. It has a lot of DSP, a lot of memory, a lot of processing our engines, and their own intellectual property. Now, this is definitely will come in future. Head down display system where we have been developing FPGA for clients, where pilot will have complete screen on his glass window or his helmet window. And he will manage the flight parameters, flight control, and need not to look up, down, left, right, inside the glass window. He'll just see everything on the screen. Gaming is another big industry. Gaming's platform is always hardware, and very high processing, image processing, compute processing devices like circuits as a key component. And it has been going to be booming field. As per Gartner, it is going to grow easily 12% a year. MEMS is another technology. It's called Microelectronic Mechanical System, where mechanical system are on the same die as electronic die. The classic example is gyroscope, accelerometer, pressure sensors, they're all being fitted on the MEMS device. And we have developed this uh, single MEMS ASIC, which are used in multiple application. Phone, you all have seen, when you rotate your phone, the image also rotates. So this rotation comes through this accelerometer, which is inside the any phone, any phone or whether it's Samsung or it's Apple. The second example is smart TV. If you have smart TV, the smart TV's remote are also very strongly connected through Wi-Fi or through Bluetooth and also gesture control. The sports device uh, here you can see is also gesture control. We have been also developing the same chip for automotive market where uh, when the car is taking turn, a very high speed turn, it measures the acceleration, it controls the speed of the car automatically and reduces the chance of skid or accident. Uh, you will never come to know because it is happening automatically in all the digital cars, but this is inherent architecture car manufacturers are implementing. Whenever the car is taking turn above 80 or 90 miles per hour, then it will automatically control the speed so that the skid doesn't happen. Same thing for motion sensing in the drone, so that drones do not collide with object or don't collide with another drone as well. And that's why you will see the two different price range in the drones. One very simply priced drone and one is very highly priced drones like uh, 50,000 rupees or 40,000 rupees. Because these drones have very sophisticated safety system called motion sensing, collision avoidance and things like that.
I'll skip this. It's another drone. So we as an industry see these are the future industry trends. IoT will remain uh, one of the key parameter in the industry. Uh, and it will reach the market of 880, 880 billion uh, by 2022. The market, the IoT market has two component, hardware and software and services. So they will also keep growing since the market is growing. So the need of hardware and software solution providers will be increasing in the coming years. And all has increased. While developing these all products, we came across these challenges. And I would like to share to all of you so you should know what are the challenges. First of all, idea itself is a challenge. Not many people come with an advanced product idea like electronic mask or like robot serving drinks or EV, electric vehicle, but for a racing car. Okay. So we need innovators who can think ideas. It's a challenge industry faces. Then products have hardware and software both. So we need expert, both the expert to develop the product. And hardware sends for VLSI chips and boats both. Low power design is a very, very consistently demanding field in most of the product which we have shown here and which you will see here because more gadgets, more battery operated devices, more and more focus on power consumption, more focus on sustainability, green greenhouse, all of the buzzwords are happening in the United Nations are also impacting the designs to be also low power. More and more different kind of sensors are coming. So designing sensors with the right range, right configuration, right certifications, also constant challenge. Human technology interface is another challenge in the, under the development, but we all should know that this is a challenge. There's a non-technical challenge like trust. People will have trust of people using the device. People have different psychology of using it. Like Asia have a psychology to use low cost to mid cost phones. Europe and USA, North America has psychology to use high cost phone. Okay. So this is one example of psychology. Uh, and of course, third important parameter is cost. Cost drives everything, including product design. Product development time is a key factor. Otherwise, competitors enter if you take long time. Patents. Another kind of challenge is same patents develop, patent copy, patent fight, patent conflict, lawsuits, companies are made and break in the patent fights. And devising newer application is also important challenge along with a legal challenge. So newer application, for example, is what is a new phone will look like after five years? Who is thinking? Same phone, everybody will get bored. So New phone, they have to enhance the feature of the camera, like number of camera, the kind of screen, foldable screen, and some other new application. But this is an important challenge because the new application has to be thought for the existing devices. The markets. VLSI and electronic system level design markets are primarily being now driven as well as executed by companies like Google, Facebook, Amazon, Alibaba, Apple, Samsung, and many, many companies. You can clearly see that the new entrants like Google, Facebook, Amazon, they were once upon a time software companies or platform companies or a social media company or e-commerce company or a search engine company, but they're all into the hardware design. Google has already set up the chip design firm or ARM branch in India. In US already they have and have been working with them and more and more companies. So the market has become big, richer into the VLSI domain. These are the few news came in the Times of India as how the market is shaping by Cadence, by Micron and by other people that India will have clearly a very, very powerful need for silicon and VLSI or electronic system level design engineers, implementers, and innovators both. 
how we design technology or how we shape or how we create our roadmap in the industry. So this kind of curve is, is being kept in a many analysis report and we as an industry take the guidance. Whatever technology you have heard is all there on this curve. Smart advisors, micro data centers, neuro businesses, biochips, IoT, quantum, everything is there on this curve. But what it shows is that shown in the bottom, the different colors. So the triangle color technology are, are the business of 10 years. That means it will take 10 years to become a reality or complete development and complete feasibility. It cannot be developed in two years, like volumetric displays, human augmentation, main computer interface. Some like blue dots are in the range of five to 10 years. That means it will come in the, in the coming three, four, five, 10 years, and it will remain till that. After that, it will vanish. The example will be augmented reality, virtual reality, crypto, wearables, IoT. So after five to 10 years, they will slow down or they'll phase down or they'll migrate into some other area. The lighter blue has a low lifespan and the no color circles is almost less than two years. So you can see all the triangles are the future or the blue dots are dark blue dots are the future. It's technology. Okay, I'll quickly dive onto the ASICs. There are multiple types of ASIC, but the major are two ASICs, full custom ASIC and semi-custom ASIC. And on the semi-custom ASIC, there are standard cell base, gate array base, and programmable, which is the FPGA. Fully custom is what we in the industry use are all fully custom. That means everything is customizable. Every minute on the internet, there's heavy traffic traffic done by YouTube, Google, Facebook, social media, all the kind of websites, and it's increasing. Not only that, the internet applications are also increasing, so bandwidth and so the data. These are the view of very, very advanced data center devices from Cisco's and Juniper network. This data center has this kind of module and each of this module has this kind of chip. And we are designing right now data center chips for all the producers like Cisco's and Juniper's. I'll skip this since all of you are from Engineering Academia. I'll not give an overview of what is 16 nanometer technology, what is CMOS, etc. But at the end, the nanometer is, is human hair is 80,000 nanometer. And we are operating into the lesser and lesser size than the human hair. And when we work with three nanometer, five nanometer, you can see it's a cell size, DNA size, and carbon nanotube size. So hemoglobin cells, for example, five nanometer. So right now we are developing five nanometer chips already, and we have done for three customers. So as the geometry is goes smaller, the devices will become more sleeker, more smaller more feature back. So earlier we used to have planar CMOS and then it became the 1D and 2D FinFET, FinFET. So the gate becomes vertically upward. And of course it gave a benefit of high speed. One of the classical challenge is optical proximity challenge which we face in photolithography. And it was there since years, but as the geometry goes lower and lower, 65 nanometer or 45 nanometer or 32 nanometer or 16 or, or even I would say 5 nanometer, this is very, very challenging. And for example, if it's an original layout of the mask, then we have to merge two different masks, the blue color and the saffron color, and merge it into the masking pattern. But when you manufacture, you will never get the sharpened edges of the rectangles, which are basically paths or transistors. And this results into a yield problem. So as the technology is going from, let's say 65 nanometer to 16, 16 to seven, seven to five, 
the manufacturing yield is getting degraded. That means out of 100 chips, only 50 chips works well. And when the only 50 chips works, the cost of production is very high. And due to that, all the next generation products you see in the market are costly. For example, iPhone 11 and 12. I'm keeping this ASIC design flow here for a quick understanding. Very quickly, you can see that the RTL is done always in software, the front end design. The synthesis is where the transition happened from soft core into the circuit block diagram or digital block diagram. And when it goes to floor planning, it becomes a pure circuit in terms of CMOS transistor. And then the place and route is all function of current, voltage, frequency, and die size. And then finally, a GDS2 comes out. Let me pause here uh, if you have any questions. One second, there's a lot of noise on my background. Pause it. I'll pause for a few seconds if there are any questions in between. Participants feel free to ask questions. Okay, going back to my slides. Some of the lower geometric projects which have been, we have been doing, uh, seven nanometer is a predominant here and here and here. A seven, 16. Excuse me, sir. There yeah. is one question from Yogesh Tiwari. He is sure. asking that is there any burden for scaling of the dimensions? Good question, Yogesh. Uh, really admire that. So, the, at every technology, no, the dead end came, but industry and academia jointly took the challenge, which was a dead end, and went and created an open gate. So the new technology was invented. So there is no dead end. It will not be. Moore's law is is going to remain uh, because when the dead end comes, people are sitting together and finding solutions. So when Let's say before 20 years, when I was in US, I thought, oh, 16 nanometer is the last technology. Nothing will come after that. But people invented 12, people invented 10 nanometer, people invented 7 nanometer, people invented 5 nanometer. So how they invented it? They completely changed the transistor. Nobody used CMOS nowadays in the last five years. Nobody uses CMOS. Everybody is using pin pad. So when students graduate, they will have to learn pin pad and not CMOS in the industry. Soon after two years, three years, pin pad will not be the basic component. So you can see when the dead end came, the innovation happened and the fundamental block called transistor itself is changed. The architecture of transistors changed by industry and academia. And then the dead end was removed. So that's, that's called innovation. People will fundamentally change the architecture of several things. Does it sound okay, Yugesh? Yes, Nilesh, thank you. Yeah. So just to answer, let's say after three nanometer, what will happen? So there'll be a circular transistor, which we call carbon nanotube, right? So the transistor is totally changing its say from planar to 2D and from 2D to circular. The basic architecture of the transistor is change, and hence uh, we can design more and more smaller devices. This is a typical example of uh, three silicon which we have developed. Uh, you can see there are blocks, there are modules, there are IPs, intellectual properties. They were developed at 16 nanometer, and these are some of the largest chips, very large chips actually. You can see from the die size 25 mm by 25 mm. Uh, this kind of chips are not there inside mobile phone, but this kind of chips are there inside the laptops or televisions or LCDs or data center. Okay. And when the chip size is larger, a lot of challenges of power, area, and timing. 
So doing more inside the view of a networking chip. So this has blocks like you know, Wi-Fi block, VA block, uh, memory block, intellectual property block, property block. And then there, there are, when you connect this block, you can see here congestion that this box has to be connected through wires. And these wires are connected to each other. So it creates congestion. And to remove the congestion, we have to detach and change the flow plan. So this flow plan is changed to this flow plan to remove the congestion. Uh, here, one of the issues, timing issue, where one block has wire coming from here, but then getting round, 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 and detouring and going back to the same block. So this will create a long wire and will create a time issue. So this is an example how we remove congestion. Yeah. There is a request from one of the participants that uh, in the center of the screen, that pop-up is there. Uh, can you just hide it? Yes. yes. Thank you. Yeah. So this red congestion is getting removed by efficient floor planning. So you move the block back and forth, left and right, east to east, north, south, and then the congestion is removed for any tip. When the congestion is removed, you are to the time. Another example of congestion removal. Typical challenge of chip design is higher runtime. When we run any silicon on simulation regression, this is a typical hours it takes. Three hours for floor plan, four to three hours for placement, 20 hours for clock tree synthesis, 70 hours for routing and optimization, 22 hours for metal fields, 40 hours, total 198 hours. That means one iteration we do, one change of transistor here and there, or, or wire, or any other change designers comes up, it takes eight days to run. In any product or any project which we have done in last 20 years, we used to have minimum 25, 45 iterations of such thing. So you can multiply 45 to 8. And those are the number of days which take any silicon to design. And that's why it takes one year or one and a half year. And that's why Moore's law is also 18 months. So how we structure ourselves in industry? In industry, we have typically four divisions, software, silicon, system, and mechanical. The software folks takes care of BI, big data, cloud, mobility. The system guy takes care of the system design, like PCBs, modules, Jesus design. The silicon team takes care of silicon design. And the mechanical team takes care of the outside and enclosures, modeling, ergonomics, and industrial design. So this is the this is a structure of ESL company, uh, and we also are structured like the same way. Newer and newer requirements are creating problems and challenges on the top of basic functionalities. For example, the basic functionalities earlier were only functionalities, but then the clocking, speed, power. So first people say, oh, we need faster device, we need faster laptops, we need one gigahertz, we need two gigahertz. The moment it increases the power, you say, oh, we need a low power device. Example is mobile. In mobile, people added quad core, people added octa core. But the moment you increase the frequency of the mobile phone beyond 800 megahertz, the power consumption increases. The moment power consumption increases, you need power management techniques, heat sinks. None of them are, none of these are there in mobile phones. So what we do, we apply power design techniques. Once we solve the power problem, then comes security and safety issue. All the electronic devices are have vulnerable to security and safety, especially in phones, especially on a mission critical like aircrafts, car, and also performance sector. People are asking, okay, the devices or the electronic system for the performance. We solve the performance, now they're asking we need most efficient software. So any ESL, electronic system level design, is constantly evolving in some of these parameters, and the new layers are being added here. Okay. The new layer here will be added to be sensors after software. Sensors are creating more and more different challenges. 
3D IC is another uh, new entrant in VLSI or the future. More and more ICs are getting connected like this way. It's a die one, die two, die three, die four, die six, and they're all connected through interposer. And then it is connected through a, a connecting balls onto the circuit board. The classic example of memory is memory. The memory is like 256 MB, 1 GB, 5 GB, 10 GB, 256 GB are using this kind of 2D and 3D ICs, purely 2D and 3D ICs. Sorry for some background noise in my house because there is some marriage related events are happening. People are moving here and there. This 2.5D device technology, which you have seen here, has been applied to statics FPGAs. If you use FPGAs, not, not, not from Xilinx, but from Altera, the statics FPGA has already applied 2.5D dies. Another interesting technology is Space ASICs, where we need to apply the radiation hardening techniques the redundant techniques and it is also one of the very challenging field we have developed this rtg4 silicon for a company called microsemi which has gone into the mars road program uh, for interplanetary scheme from nasa and the techniques were radiation hardening and of course redundancy redundancy means that for every function there are three silicon. So if one silicon fails, other silicon comes up. If another silicon fails, third silicon comes up. Then there's a redundancy in board level. So if one board fails, second board comes up. Second board fails, third board comes up. And inside the silicon also there is IP redundancy. So if there's one IP on the die, or the silicon fails, the second IP will switch over. So that's the triple redundancy. Data center has been very, very booming field because of the advent of mobile phones, tablets, all kind of ubiquitous computing and networking. So recently we launched world's fastest programmable router and switch. And we are also working on a very new technology called straight away optic cable onto the silicon die. So if that happens, Optical connectivity will be straight away onto the electronic die, and you don't need any optical connectors, you don't need any optical modules, and that will reduce the data center size by one tenth. This is the typical challenges we face in the industry as a structure. So, during manufacturing 32 nanometer, 22 nanometer, and 14 nanometer, the manufacturing is happening in 2009 to 10 in this technology, but already companies were developing for 2014 and doing research for 10, 7, and 5. So this is the roadmap of Intel. And similarly, every company is designing a similar roadmap. So right now, if we are into 2020, we already have this technology in manufacturing. But the future technology like one nanometer, sub nanometer are into the development and research phase. And it is going to continue like this. The next future people are seeing is carbon nanotube and post carbon nanotube is also a spin electronics where magnetic effect of electronic spin will be used as a logic detection. Once again quickly touching upon how transistors change from planar to 2D and 2D to you know circular through carbon nanotube which will help shrinking requirement. Google is also doing a tensor processing unit, a very, very powerful uh, module, very, very high speed multi processing algorithms. And these chips are world's largest chips. And that's the innovation in the system design. And these larger system chips are very tough to handle in terms of power management. And they require uh, liquid cooling to do power management, not the air cooling. What we see skill gap in the technology domain, industry is looking for sound fundamentals, projects 
which people are doing good design thinking and testing thinking problem solving skill and system level architecture understanding not implementation so this is the missing component right now we, as an industry we always realizing there is a skill gap of system level architecture understanding not implementation just understanding how to connect bigger picture how to connect the dots <clears throat> and of course attitude of continuous learning if there are these six bullets in engineering fraternity then innovation will constantly happen so that is it thanks a bunch everyone for your support uh, the floor is open for question and answer together industry and academia we our dream is common don't limit your challenge challenge your limits and i'll have this floor open for any question answer anybody has about anything any technology or anything in terms of engineering and system Participants, if you have any question, feel free to ask. So there is one question from Amit V Patel. How the 1.04 gigahertz clock is generated, and what are the performance parameters are to be taken care of? Okay, so there is no rocket science. There are high performance crystal are connected to a pin of silicon, and then a silicon pin will internally have PLL and DLL. So DLL circuits are designed in a stage way. So for example, there will be crystal with above 500 megahertz and 100 megahertz, and that will be given input to DLL. And that will generate one gigahertz and above one gigahertz circuits uh, is a one method. And then the performance parameter are actually a very architecture specific. So, for example, on any silicon, you will not have every block, every IP working at 1.6 gigahertz. You will have processor working at 1.2 gigahertz. You will have memory working at 800 megahertz you will have ethernet module working at probably i would say 5 mega 5 gigahertz uh, because ethernet uh, the ethernet keep the correct speed is high so there will be a multiple modules on the silicon which are working in the range of 800 megahertz to 2 gigahertz and then they average it out after architectural calculation and they say they call okay this silicon is working at 1.6 gigahertz okay but primarily that performance is of always a processor processor should work at 1.6 gigahertz spi or i2c or usb or others will not be working at that frequency how to tune the performance is is purely uh, architectural decision uh, in order to improve 1.6 to 1.7 you need to change the architecture imply the different kind of it's called uh, double sided flip flops to implement you know, uh, <clears throat> so for example, we don't only change the data on the rising edge of, of the clock, but we also change at the falling edge of the clock. So in this single clock, you can have more faster performance. You know, typical data is okay at the rising of edge of the clock. Uh -huh. You change the state of data in the fifth flop, and then not the next rising edge of the clock. So one clock cycle is is the typical duration. There's many data processing. There's a rising edge of clock and the falling edge of clock. Both is used, and the speed is doubled. So these are the various techniques we use as architecture point to ensure the performance of multi gigahertz system. So there is one more question from Yogesh Tiwari. He is asking that you were talking about space asset and about switching between onboard to IP to another. What happens if the switching mechanism gets affected by the radiation? Then the module switching happens. 
Also, there are also three modules, not only the three silicon, three IPs, and there are three modules. So in the one module, uh, if switching fails, the other module card, it will on, it will start. Okay. And of course, you are right that there can be one, there can be some chance that it fails, but that is, that statistic is done by a typical space agency. And they say that IP switching error will happen only in XYZ condition, not in all chips. If it happens in all chips, the next card will work. If all the card has this problem of switching because of the radiation, that uh, scientific modeling they have done, and they say they have come to this conclusion that this is triple redundancy is needed because occurrence of switching algorithm or switching logic or switching cable circuit, whatever it is, you know, at board level, all failing together every uh, in in condition is is point. 0, 0, 0, 0, certain percentage of probability. Okay. So based on that, the triple redundancy word is key. There's one company which is designing uh, men uh, uh, missions with uh, humans on the space. So they have created seven redundancy algorithm. So they said if humans die, it's risky. For example, Kalpana Chawla. Right? So those space missions, NASA is applying five Redundancy, six redundancy, seven redundancy as well. So that's how we mitigate the risk. There is no hundred percent surety. Yeah, always is a chance of something failing. Is Murphy's law actually? So if I have to share one important uh, suggestion or important sharing, then one of the sharing is uh, we are going to enter into a smart world, smart connected world in the next decade. And it will drive new products. It will drive innovations. It will drive challenges as well. And it will create a lot of scope of progress for engineering community. So we have a bright future ahead of us as an industry in academia. And with recent post pandemic situation have happened, the world is looking India to step up and fill the gap which China only is filling right now. We have a very bright future on our way. And I'm hopeful that we all will work hard and work brightly to make that system happen. So I'll pause for a minute and if there's no question, uh, we'll log off. I'll pause for a minute. Uh, sir, there is one question from Professor Hardy Pade. He is asking about the uh, situation of foundries in India. So, we already have SCL, SCM, sorry. That's an older technology foundry which manufactures at lower German, very uh, older technology, I would call it. In India, there is initiatives, there are news, there are enthusiasm, there is debate, there is committees, there are people hired. But as of today, there is no concrete plan came up by anybody. Before seven years, somebody made a plan to set up a foundry in Hyderabad with the help of AMD. Before five years, somebody made a plan to set up a foundry with the help of ST Micro and JP. JP is another larger business group in North India. They also plan to set up a foundry near Prantij as well in Gujarat. There's a recent press release that Tata is looking to set up a foundry and they hired somebody from Intel and Tata wants to put a lot of money into that. So the intent is there, the enthusiasm is there and everything is there, but there is no 100% concrete plan I have seen uh, as a semiconductor profession. So my answer will be, there is no challenge of setting up. There is no enthusiasm problem in India. But there is something which is not seen is why it's not happening. Okay. So if I have to answer that why it's not happening, it's ecosystem. To set up a foundry, you need an ecosystem. Ecosystem of you know millions of liters of water, clean water, highly uninterrupted electric power supply, 
manpower ecosystem because foundry needs manpower who was aware about mechanicals who is aware about physics who are aware about mechanical instrument if instrument falls repairing them and then ecosystem of testing houses ecosystem of designing companies all of that at the same place not at the different place so such ecosystem is not there in bangalore in order to supply water you need the place to be near the sea shore the taiwan is leading because it is surrounded by sea all the area of the taiwan same for japan same for california okay. so uh, where to get highly unintended water supply and electric supply in india you will come to know only one or two states in your mind and if you consume hugely so these are all uh, nitty gritty uh, which is complicated but not unsolvable uh i see in next 10 years it will happen it will not happen this year the move has started it will happen in next 10 years so there is one question from my side almost all industries these days are concerned about the environment and sustainable sustainable development of uh, the uh, path in part for the future so sir beyond the power consumption uh, we are we looking for the vlsi industry is looking for any kind of changes in the current processes for the sustainable future so you like to say it right like it is not a easy subject sustainability and green you know is not a easy subject the millions of dollar being planned executed there are multiple techniques where vlsi industry is experiment there's no one technique they will sustain so for example green technology so how do we use green chemicals to lead free materials for example to make it green the second is how do we manage this millions of liters of water which we are getting to filter the plant so water management is the biggest challenge right now in uh, vlsi industry for sustainable the third and fourth is also uh, the sustainability is very costly as well it's not cheaper for example if you start the plant and if you shut down the plant it's not easy it has its repercussion everywhere the sixth is newer technology like biochips or spin electronics if if that technology gets more mature uh, then it has a lesser use of sustainability component but brighter use of technology so because then the electronic spin will be used as a one and zero and not necessarily any other thing so i would call it the multiple component there is no one right answer you have to keep experimenting vls is a difficult subject to uh, take first example for sustainability the reason is electronic waste you know all of us have electronic waste in our home the old tv old phones old mouse old laptops or cables or chargers everything old we have we throw down it creates ev electronic waste ew sorry so it, it is needing step by step process and it, it is taking time so there is one question from yogesh tiwari we say that so quantum computing and spin electronics are same or different maybe you guys shall take it offline they are same in my view uh, but they are but, but quantum computing has many sub components and one of the sub component is spin electronics okay apart from that if you have any questions i'm putting my email id here uh, so you can connect me offline and i'm putting my phone number on the chat window you can connect your questions or any discussion point uh, or the phone whatsapp chat or any communication medium thank you very much everyone uh, for your 
patience for uh, you know listening and uh, encouraging me through interactive questions thank you very much so we are really glad to have you today with us and uh, you have covered from the advanced developments in the industries to the future trends in the real estate industries as well as in the devices so uh, your session was really uh, good and uh, really interactive you have solved all the queries from the participants uh, thank you very much sir thank you bye and have a good day everyone thank you sir Dear participants, uh, we have the online immigration ceremony centrally arranged by the AICT Atal Portal. So for that, the link uh, I'm providing you over here. Uh, so you are required to join that uh, ceremony online. It will be there from 11 a.m. onwards. Hello, uh, good afternoon, sir. Marmik, sir. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, sir, uh, can you please uh, repeat uh, what you uh, said just now? Because uh, there was uh, lots of noise when yes, it was. Yes, yes, ma yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, AICT Atal platform is arranging the central ceremony, central inauguration ceremony at 11 a.m. So we are expected to attend that ceremony. And for that, the link I have copied over here in the chat box. So all the participants are requested to join the link online. Um, sir, how will the attendance be captured? Uh, like, uh, will there be a separate link for that? Uh, for yes. your uh, for this FTP? Yes, for the application, you will be shared with a you will be shared with a Google form. You are required to fill up the details in that Google form for the attendance daily. Uh, for every session. No, daily one link will be shared, one form will be shared with you. You will be filling up the form. Okay, thank you so much, sir. After attending the innovation ceremony, uh, the next session will be starting at 12.30 sharp. All the participants are expected to be there in time.